Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name's Soleil and I garden in the zone 5B here in Michigan. So I've got a great video for you today. I'm gonna to talk a bit about how I spray for deer and rabbits, especially in my front yard. I'm super unhappy right now. I'm mourning the loss of some of my hostas out there, but instead of staying in a mourning stage, I'm going to snap into action and I'm gonna take care of business so they don't get any more. Also, I'm going to share with you today a new tool that my husband got me. I'm super excited about it. It's amazing. I love it. And I think you're going to like it too. So um, let's get started. If you're enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Even hit the notification bell to get notified anytime a new video comes out. Also, if you see me waving my hands around in this video, it's because there's tons of mosquitoes again. I've sprayed myself, but you know, they're here. So. What I've been doing to spray for deer and rabbit is I use Liquid Fence. Liquid Fence is a deer and rabbit repellent and I buy it in this concentrate bottle. I get this concentrate bottle usually off Amazon um, because I find that it's cheaper if I buy it in concentrate and then mix it myself. I think they send, save a little bit of money on the shipping so if I mix it um, and add the water it's pretty easy. You really have to shake this stuff up. It's got little teeny tiny particles of stuff in it. Um, maybe some disgusting eggs, maybe some rat and who knows what. Um, but it smells pretty awful. Uh, the smell does go away after a few hours, but um, it's really noticeable. So if you're going to do it, I recommend that maybe you do it in the evening or you do it in the morning. Make sure your windows are closed so it doesn't come into your house. Um, and just do it at a time when you don't plan to be spending time outside. You use about 12 to 13 ounces of this per um, gallon of water. I don't actually measure it out every single time. Um, I simply have gotten used to seeing what it looks like in terms of the color. It's kind of a rotten, disgusting, pukey looking color. <laughs> I'll show you. So gross, right? But um, it works really well. And so it doesn't hurt the animals, the deer aren't injured by it, the rabbits aren't injured by it. I will say your sense of smell will be injured by it uh, for a little bit of time, but um, it's rain resistant, they say. I do find that I have to spray it a lot more in the spring. In the springtime is when uh, the new growth is coming out and so it looks super irresistible to the deer and rabbit who uh, just like us are coming out of the winter doldrums and wanting something fresh and they head straight for the hostas and the other type of plants that they enjoy the most. And so I spray it on the plants that I know that they enjoy the most. Um, so for example, I don't spray it necessarily on barberries because deer and rabbits don't eat my barberries. Um, but I, I do tend to put it on um, thicker on those plants that I know that they enjoy. So when I started using this stuff to spray, I started by using this sprayer and you can get this at any hardware store. I think it's around $10. It's a hand pump. It creates a pressure and then you spray with this end and you want to create a nice fine mist. I do find that sometimes this one will get clogged up and I'd have to smash it on the ground just to get the little chunks out of the um, thing that sucks it up. I don't know what it's called. Um, and then I have to pump it pretty constantly throughout the period of time that I'm spraying it. So um, I was really excited when a company called Chemo contacted me and said that they wanted me to try out their backpack sprayer. So they sent this to me and I had no idea what it was going to be like, but I actually have tried it out before I did this video because I wanted to share with you um, how it works and how well it works for me because I would highly recommend if you have a larger area, like this one's really good for small areas, but if you're a larger area like me and you have to cover a lot of plants, this is fantastic. Um, first of all, I can put it on my back and it takes the weight off so I'm not lugging this around by hand. Second of all, it comes with this rechargeable battery. So I just charge this up and I pop it in and then it's ready to go when it sprays. In addition to that, look at the length of the wand here that I have. It comes with a plastic wand or a metal wand. So this is the metal wand 
and this is the plastic wand. The reason I'm using the metal wand is because this stuff stinks. I already told you that, right? It smells horrible. So if I have this longer wand, I can keep it further away from my nose as well as from my feet and any drift um, will stay away from me. That's another tip. Don't use this stuff when it's windy out, guys. Um, if you do, you have to be really careful because it can get on you and then you will smell really bad too. So in addition to that, I don't want to lose these. The package comes with some of these small uh, washers that help to connect the different taps. It does also have this tap that can go over the plastic sprayer because you can use it with herbicides or you can use it with something like this um, or you could use it with um, an insecticide. I do recommend that you don't use the same one for that unless you're prepared to clean it out really really thoroughly in between uses so I tend to keep mine separate I have multiple sprayers um, but this is the type of spray that I use the most so and I use the most of so I'm going to dedicate this sprayer simply to the liquid fence all right so this has a small compartment on the side where you put the battery in and you simply pop it in like that close it up and then it has a button on the side that you turn on for power so let's go get this started and I'll show you how it works okay so we're gonna show you a little bit of the areas that were devastated now close your eyes if you don't want to see it ready go All right, now that you've seen that devastating destruction that the deer have caused in my garden, wipe your tears away and let's get into action. Um, this is gonna turn on, it has two different, um, sorry, I can't see it. Oh, it's on this side. It has two different um, settings. It has one setting and two setting. The one setting um, runs a little bit lower and creates a lower pressure and the two setting creates a high pressure. So um, I'll start off with the low pressure very quiet you can see it just comes out in a very fine mist and I'm gonna walk really quickly because this actually goes so fast compared to what I used to do can you smell it yet Now when I did this with the hand pump, this would take me probably a half an hour because to do the backyard, which the rabbits come in, and the front yard where I get both deer and rabbits, I've got a lot of plants to cover. Oop, got to step back here. There's a bit of a wind drift. Whew. But look how nice and far away I can stand from this. This is so fantastic. Thank you, Chemo. This is amazing. And you guys, they sent me a link to um, where you can get this if you're interested. We're almost done with the whole front yard already. Now, the battery turns off um, every time I let go of this wand, but I press it down, it turns back on. And then it also has a lock so that you can um, put it on kind of permanent on until you take it off. I like to do it myself because I don't want this stuff to just stay on. The other thing that's awesome about this is it has a little, um, sifter in the top and so when you pour the liquid in it gets out any of the larger particles and keeps them from going down in so it also doesn't get clogged like the other one did 
Here we go. I'm heading around this direction. Now, if you're wondering, will this bother the pollinators? The answer is no. I have seen that they keep coming back no matter what. Do you see here, I'm not doing the boxwoods. I'm just doing the dianthus because they like the dianthus, but not the boxwoods. And I find this does last through a rain, but not a super bad storm. All right, last garden bed to do here. All right, so that was pretty easy. And here's uh, what the strainer looks like, which can come out so that you can clean it. And you can see there's a little bit of debris that it caught. Check this bad boy out. This is what my husband got me. This is the steel electric chainsaw. You guys, this is awesome. Here's the battery. This is what's rechargeable. You simply pop it in here. It comes in this cute little case, which I don't have out here right now. And then you pop this off and look at that perfect little chainsaw then you simply depress either the lever on this side or the lever on that side and hold this down at the same time and you use two hands and it cuts through really well so let's go try this out on some lilacs come on all right guys we're gonna take down this branch right here which is pretty thick this is gonna work really well. Now I want to remind you guys, if you get one of these, this is a chainsaw. It's small, but it's so mighty. You have to be very careful. Wear some goggles. Um, if you're outside, you might even wanna wear some gloves. I don't think it's necessary for me, but um, definitely wear some closed toed shoes. Just take some safety precautions that are basic, okay? All right, here we go. This is how it works again. Hold this lever down. See that? Pretty powerful. Keep it away from your body. Here we go. There you go. It just cut through that really well. And uh, I could cut probably about four more of those before it runs out of battery. So it's super fantastic to uh, help cut back brush and other things. Still, and then um, it has a, you can see where the battery is at right here, it will tell you. And when you're done, you just put the cover on, pop the battery out and recharge it. All right, 
I got that done. So I'm really enjoying this. This is a great tool. Between the two of these tools, they're definitely making things better around my garden. So if you're interested in either of these, again, I'm going to put some links in the description so that you can check them out as well. Thanks for joining me today. What are you guys looking for? What are your favorite tools in the garden? What things make your jobs easier? Let's share a little bit in the comments because I think we can always learn from each other things that can help make our jobs easier. We'll see you next time. Bye!